Welcome back, everybody. This is our next lecture on visual elements on the element of color, one of the most important. So we've already looked at line, shape, value, and space. Now we're looking at color and how we can use it in a variety of different ways. So some things to know about color. There's a fair amount of vocabulary here, and some of it may seem kind of kindergarten basic, but I do want to make sure everyone is on the same page, so bear with me. The colors can be categorized into groups of three, and we call a set of three colors a triad. So the first triad that we'll look at is the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. We refer to those as the primaries because they are the colors that we combine to create all of the others. So theoretically speaking, you can't create yellow or blue or red, but by mixing their you could create any of the other colors. Your secondary colors are made by mixing two primaries. So you think of them almost as the parents of. The primaries are the parents of the secondaries. Red plus yellow gives you orange. Yellow plus blue gives you green. Red plus blue gives you violet, or what we usually call purple. Your intermediary or your tertiary color essentially secondaries that have more of one of the primaries in the mix. If you think of green, for instance, as being 50% yellow and 50% blue, we could alter that green by having it be 75% yellow and only blue. That would give us a more yellowish green. So in fact, we name the secondary colors for the primary color that there's more of in the mixture. So instead of saying orange-ish red, the correct name is red-orange. So yellow-orange, yellow-green, blue-green, blue-violet, red-violet. They're always named for the parent primary color that there's more of in the mix. Complements are colors that are opposite one another. So the opposite of a primary is always a secondary, red green, yellow, violet, blue, and orange. Analogous colors are colors that are side by side on the color wheel. So this is the for our Depreche and for design class. It's got essentially the 12 main colors that we'll use in our discussion later, almost like the um, hours on a clock. At the top, we have yellow. Beside it is yellow, orange, then orange red. Red is your next primary color. So if we count the spaces between yellow and red, there's three spaces there, yellow or So if I count three spaces between red, one, two, three, and my next primary color, blue, I should also then have three spaces, boom, 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 before I get back to yellow. And you'll notice in this diagram that that triangle in the middle, which reminds you the primary triad, yellow, red, and blue, the apex points of the triangle actually point to where those colors are on the wheel. So arrangement. So again, thinking just at the basic level, if we look at those three colors that we build everything else from, primary tri triad, yellow, red, and blue, the triangle is helping us locate those. We've got now three blank spaces in between that's gonna allow us to lay out all of the other colors in our wheel in a really clear and logical way. So now that we've placed the primaries, we wanna have marked those with the number two because those are our secondaries. So again, yellow and red are primaries, those two kind, and if you see this edge of the inner triangle where yellow and red come together creates a new triangle now pointing us to where orange would helps us to locate things on the wheel. So there's going to be an empty space between a primary and a secondary. Empty space back to primary. So yellow and red make orange. Red and blue give us violet. Make green. So we now have six colors that we haven't labeled yet. Those are going to be your tertiary or intermediary colors. 
So secondaries are always made by combining two primaries, but in theory at least, in equal amounts, 50% of each. The colors that are now on the screen, labeled with 3A or 3B, are the colors or the tertiaries. They're essentially your secondary colors, but with more of one of the primary colors in the mixture. So let's take orange, for example. If I take orange and I put more red in it than yellow, I've got a red orange. If I take that base orange and add more yellow to it, more yellow than red, I have a 3B here, my yellow orange. The reason I put the letters in there is so that you could see that although there are six of them, two, three, four, five, six, they form two triads. Three A's, if I skip one, two, three spaces, I should come to the next three A, skip three spaces, skip three spaces. Aha! I have another triad there. These colors will look really good together. They're equally far from each other on the color wheel. They create a color triad. So I have one triad of the three A's. I have another triad of the three B's. My A three spaces brings me to red violet. Skip three spaces brings me to blue green. And there's my next triadic so the primaries form a triad. They are equally far apart from each other on the color wheel. My secondary colors, they are equally far apart. So we end up with four triadic groups, 12 colors overall. I can loosely divide my color wheel in half. And we can refer to the left half on this diagram as being cool colors and the right half being Think of the warm colors as the colors that you might associate with fire, red, yellow, orange. The cools are associated perhaps more with water, green, yellow, uh, green, blue, and purple. So in general, we can talk about those two big groups, the cools and the warms, as our most analogous groupings. The warm colors are going to look good to go together because they're side by side on the color wheel. The cool colors will look good together because they are side by side on the color wheel. When you think about it, when you think about getting dressed and you're looking at the options of your clothing, we sometimes dress in analogous colors. Those are colors that will look logical, they'll look good together. So when we think about painting, especially when we think about art, we often use the color wheel as a way of thinking about how to organize colors into groups. Colors that contrast each other. Colors that don't necessarily um, make instantly easy to look at groupings are colors that contrast. They're direct each other. That's what we call a complementary pair. The complement of a primary is always a secondary. So the complement of yellow, the secondary color violet. The complement of the primary color red is the secondary color green. The complement of the primary color blue is the secondary color orange. They look good together in a way because they contrast each other strongly, the same way that black and white looks great together. They look great together because they contrast intensely. You can probably think of a North Carolina university sports team that uses yellow purple or gold purple as their colors, right? The ECU Pirates are using a color scheme for logos, uniforms, and that's prevalent throughout all major sports. How many sports teams can you think of that have blue, orange logos and uniforms? It's kind of fascinating to think about using those colors. Don't we use red and green together a lot for a particular holiday season? There's a reason that those red colors look so good. Red berries against green leaves is very attractive to the eye. They're complementary colors. They are very intense when side by side. So I can use this idea of whether colors are analogous side by side each other or complex 
of each other to create different emotional effects. Here is another romantic style painting that is uh, very much uh, built on the idea of curves and organic shapes, but also in this case has a lot of warm colors. Usually when I show this in person, what color stands out the most, the first color people usually call out is red. But there's a lot of orange-ish, brown-ish earth tone. And granted, there's a little bit of blue sky and a little bit of green over here in the corner underneath this horse's hooves. It's not all reds and oranges. But if you really look at this color wheel here that has our cool, or rather warm colors, reds into oranges into yellows, them as lighter and darker values, look at how much that darker orange is an earth tone brown and how darker yellow leans into kind of a green color. There's a ton of warm colors here. We often think of warm color in particular as being associated with our most intense emotions, our passions, love, and violence are often in red. How about this? Isn't that painting much cooler, more calming, less violent than that hunting scene? And the colors used are almost exclusively blues and greens, but even the things that appear white, that white picture, for, and actually has a lot of bluish, greenish, light color mixed into that white. It's not white straight out of the analogous set of cool colors, completely different emotional effect. These colors have a little more tension in them. We could have analogous colors that have some warms and some cools. Yellow we often associate as a warm color, but yellow is next to the greens, which are to the blues. So this piece here that has this yellow that pops out at you still feels like these all belong together because the analogous color scheme, yellow into green into blue, contained. This image has a warm red-ish color that then, of course, red is next to the purple. Blues. These all go together, but it allows us some cool blue and purple with a little intense warm red as well. So you get that effect of intense contrast without it being as intense as it could be if we had complementary pairs. Another vocab term to color are the terms tint and shade. The base color at its usual intensity is what we call the hue. You can think of the name of the color. And that's what you see here on this ring of this color wheel. That ring right there normal intensity, that normal red. If I add a bunch of black to my red, it's going to darken the value, make it darker, but it also makes it a little less intense. A hue plus black is what we call a shade. You can think of it almost as a shade. It's darker in the shade. If I take my base hue of red and I add more white to it, it does make it lighter, but again, less intense. I'm getting into my range of my pinks here. So a hue plus white equals your tint, plus black is your shade. So I can do a lot with one single color by manipulating tint, the base color blue, and add darker values and lighter values of blue and create an image using almost only single color. Yeah, there's some green a bit here at the bottom, but for the most part, this painting is almost exclusively lighter and darker blues. I refer to this as monochromatic. Mono meaning one, chroma meaning color, monochrome, single color. We can also talk about some color schemes being polychromatic, lots of colors, but monochromatic is one of the color schemes to be able to recognize monochrome, one color. It doesn't mean that it has to be lighter and darker blue. It can be lighter and darker 
color. It could be all lighter, darker red, all darker orange. The idea of monochromatic is single color, lighter and darker tints and shades. But you get the idea. These are all monochromatic color schemes, all tints and shades of green, or of purple, or of red, or of orange. All of those, each one is a monochromatic color scheme. Complementary colors have intense contrast, and this piece has a very intense pair of complements. You have yellow purple or yellow violet and red green played off of one another. We can also create illusions of space by playing with colors, whether they're warm or cool, whether they're complementary. If you look at this orange on the left against this yellow, it seems to be a much darker, it's much darker than the yellow beside it. That orange here looks really pale compared to how dark the purple is, or sorry, how dark the blue is around it. If I take the background away though, you can see that the color of the orange is exactly the same. Take those out, check it out, those are the same orange. If I put the backgrounds back in, they look like two different values. So the colors themselves are affected by what is next to them. It also plays with the way that you perceive them in terms of space, doesn't it? That orange against the yellow doesn't seem to be projected forward very much, but that orange against the blue pops out at us. Generally speaking, warmer colors seem to come closer to us. Cool colors seem to recede to go back in space. So we can play with illusions of space just by playing with color. Kind of interesting to see the effect I just showed you in this example here by the artist Joseph Alvers. He's showing you that he can make the same color appear to be very different based on what is next to it or what is on top of it. This square here looks very different than this one, but in fact that shape is the same exact color. It's just against two different backgrounds really kind of remarkable what your eye will do when other colors are introduced, how we perceive space. So again, complements green create a strong sense of contrast, can make the red pop forward against the cool green background. We can create that initial effect here. This is a little eye straining, but bear with me. Take a look at that shape in the center. Just kind of stare right there and try not for about, let's say, 30 seconds. Just keep staring straight ahead. Try not to blink. Try to keep your eye focused on the same thing. A few more seconds. And then try not to blink and try not to move your eyes away from the same exact I'm going to take the image off the screen and leave us with a blank white screen. Boom. Do you feel a strange a weird visual effect. Do you see a reddish rectangle where the green was and a greenish blue rectangle where the red was? Your eyes are actually kind of seeing the direct opposite colors, even though you're not physically seeing it on the screen. Your brain is creating that in what we call an after image. That happens a lot when you pair up complements. When you pair up that red and green, these really carefully so that they would be as close to exact complement pairs as possible to create this after image effect when they appear. Of course, we can group colors in a lot of ways. We can create spatial effects and after image effects with complementary colors. We can create a strong emotion with all warms or a somber emotion with all cools. We can also create a sense that colors belong together perhaps intellectualized way by just using the triads. In this case, you see at the top a triad of green, purple, orange, our secondary color. You can also see how well the primary colors go together as a triad on that image on the left. And painters often use mostly red, yellow, blue, 
mostly green, orange, purple, as in this case, to create triadic color scheme effects. They're really kind of interesting pairings for things of colors. The last color concept for us to deal with is the idea of intensity. And those two portraits definitely have a different emotional thing. The Mona Lisa feels much less intense than the color that you see in the German Expressionist painting to its left. So intent is how saturated, how much pigment, how intense the color is. We can desaturate colors in two ways, either by adding white or or shades, or by mixing complements. If I take this orange and this blue-green and those two together, those complements, the more I mix together, are going to give me neutral grays. And they are, of course, much less intense 